Hi, I'm Daniel Holzapple. I'm the community garden manager here at Blue Lake Rancheria's Deluvioe Community Garden. Um, I'm making this video to show you our composting system. So we get materials here from uh, multiple sources on the Rancheria. These include our commercial kitchens. Um, we've got one for the tribe's Title VI nutrition program that provides meals for elders in the community. And then of course we've got the commercial kitchen at the casino's restaurants. So we get pre-consumer um, green waste materials from those guys. The tribe also has a brewery and we get spent grain from them. Um, so on top of that, of course, we've got materials in the garden itself. Uh, these include um, spent bedding from our flock of quail that we get eggs from, uh, grass clippings, as well as any uh, leftover vegetative materials from our different crops. So we combine this all together here at our little composting hub. We do a multi-stage system that allows us to separate out uh, younger materials that we're adding to the system from more mature compost. Uh, previously what we did was kind of a combination of a windrow pile and trench composting. But um, since COVID started, we haven't been getting quite as much material. So we decided that it would make made a little more sense, at least for the time being, to do smaller piles hand turned. <clears throat> Once we get into um, post COVID times and the casino restaurant is back at full swing, um, we might switch back over to the windrows. Um, however, the windrow pile, to turn it, of course, you have to use um, heavy machinery. So if we've got our farm tractor for that, but we do try to avoid using fossil fuels when we can. So it was kind of decided that um, hand turning, at least for the time being, would be the preferable option. So we've put our compost piles together using recycled pallets and tea posts. It's really easy to do. Uh, you can set it up really quickly and it really allows you to, you know, control the size and height of your piles because of course you want to build them up nice and high to help increase the internal temperatures. And then we basically just use tarps to cover them when it's rainy or if it's uh, getting a little too, too cold. In addition to the, the main piles, we also have a couple piles behind me here of extra materials. So some of this is goat bedding that was donated from tribal staff. Uh, some of it is wood chips. And then we have some larger um, woodier materials that if we need, uh, we let it dry out and we chop it up and that really can help add some nice brown material to the compost piles. Um, yeah, so that's our system currently. And next I'll talk about our transportation processes. So we have a couple different things that we use to transport our compost materials here at the garden. Of course, we've got a wheelbarrow for stuff that's uh, right here in the garden. So, you know, any leftover vegetable scraps or the quail bedding or grass clippings um, from mowing in the garden. Um, and then we've got our tractor and we use this to transport bins of spent grain or food waste from the casino or Elders Nutrition Program kitchens. Um, so that's been really useful um, because it allows us to transport relatively heavy bins of material um, across the rancheria in, rel in you know, a small amount of time. Um, and then some of our future goals for the compost system, um, of course we're, looking, we're hoping to expand. Um, initially that's going to be creating more bin slots with recycled pallets. Um, it's really easy to do and it really allows us to separate out the different types of materials that are coming into the system so we can really control our layers and build really nice compost piles. So, you know, I'm looking to eventually have, um, you know, a pile for grass clippings from the landscaping crew, a pile for the spent grain, a pile for food um, scraps from the kitchens, a pile for the quail bedding. Um, in addition to that, um, we're looking to uh, get some nice composting tarps um, to really control how much moisture gets into the piles and help build up the temperature inside them. Of course, we get a lot of rain here in Humboldt County, especially in the winter and spring, and so that will really help us control the moisture because they do tend to get a little too soggy right now. Um, and then we'll uh, probably be getting a compost thermometer too pretty soon so we can really start tracking the temperatures and know exactly when we need to turn our piles and make sure that they are getting to an appropriate temperature to kill any pathogens, weed seeds, or pest eggs. Um, and then um, the tribe is starting to consider how we can address post-consumer um, food scraps from the casino kitchens. Um, of course, to do that, um, 
a couple of piles and hand turning isn't really going to cut, cut it. So we're going to start looking into things like com large scale compost digesters and that sort of thing to see what would be the most feasible option to take on more materials and eliminate those from the general waste stream in the area. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Jacob Pounds and he's going to talk a little more about our setup. My name is Jacob Pounds and I'm here to give you a little back context on our historic composting practices and what we've been doing around the garden here for a few years. So as you can see behind us, we have the grounds of the garden and our composting system and Daniel in his natural habitat. So one of the original tasks that I was uh, given when I started here with Blue Lake Rancheria was creating the integrated solid waste management plan. And in that plan, kind of detailed steps to move towards a zero waste future. And one of the big plan, one of the big oh, categories was food waste, because food waste typically makes up about 40% of a waste stream. And food is typically really wet, so it's really heavy, and you pay a lot of money to throw that stuff away. So, and you're really throwing away a pretty valuable resource. So, um, it took some years and some time for uh, everybody to kind of coordinate and work together. But eventually, uh, we started the trench composting program with uh, Suzanne Alvernaz and the Casino Kitchen, where we'd take a ditch witch and we divided the garden area up into four different quadrants. One, two, three, four. It's kind of hard to see because we have this lush cover crop on it right now. And we would make a few ditches and put all of the animal, or uh, all the food scraps and no animal waste into the trenches. And then once the trenches were full, we'd bury them and use that as our planting area the following growing season. And that worked really well for a few years until the community garden really ramped up and had a dedicated staff person and ways to manage it a little bit more effectively. So at that point, we moved to kind of a cinder cone looking windrow system, which was like a compost volcano. It's geologic compost, pretty cool. And that worked okay because people would come and contribute their compost from different departments, and uh, but it was really kind of poorly organized and it made it hard to achieve kind of finished compost. So now as you can see with a dedicated staff person and a dedicated space we can do amazing compost here for the garden for the benefit of the soil and the critters and the elders and everybody else who gets to eat delicious yummy food that is grown in the garden.